Let's pick up our conversation on understanding Bitcoins. We have a series called the Bitcoin Standard where we are trying to understand the concept of Bitcoin and we are trying to understand the concept of the latest technological advancement when it comes to money. And in the process, we realized it will be very hard to truly understand Bitcoin and digital currencies by extension if we don't understand the history of money and we also don't have understand the characteristics of money and the functions of money. So in our quest to truly understand the operation of Bitcoin, we just realized that we have to go back in time and understand money because Bitcoin is a money concept. It's a technology that is supposed to come and help people to exchange value. But because money by itself is not a new concept, we now try to go back in history and ask ourselves, what is that that makes a good quality of money? What is that that makes excellent money? And then we come forward and we look at what are the characteristics and what is Bitcoin. And in the process, we will be able to compare our understanding of Bitcoin versus our understanding of money. And then we can now give a exhaustive conclusion on our beliefs around Bitcoin. So in this episode today, guys, I have a discussion that is going to surround our understanding of money. If you're joining us for the first time, my name is Duncan Robert, and this is Channel Ask Draft. This is an educative platform where we endeavor to educate, to empower, and to inform you guys about so many things that are happening within our society. We have an inclination towards business economics, but we don't shy away from venturing into spaces that we are not used to. And that is what makes this channel what it is. So if you're joining us for the first time, this is a series of the Bitcoin standard. And this episode is going back in time to remind us what money is and how we can use that understanding to now even better explain our concept of what Bitcoin are. So in our understanding of money, we realized that we have to go back in time and understand the origin of money. Where did money come from? Where did we start? The only reason why we start having the conversation of money is because human beings have needs. But in the traditional societies, the needs that we had could easily be covered by our neighbors. I will exchange my farming produce with the produce that will come from the cows. And in the process, we will have exchanged, satisfied each other's needs. And that is what was referred to as butter trade. Over time, a problem arose out of that process. And that is what was called lack of the coincidence of wants. For an exchange to happen successfully, two people have to exchange things that are coincidentally you need what I have and I need and I and I have what you need. But that was the number one weakness that now caused uh, people to start thinking of getting even uh, better modes of exchanging value. That butter trade thing was working when the society was very simple. In a locality, in a small area, that kind of an exchange would work. But when the society starts getting bigger, population starts getting bigger, it becomes complex because the more the people, the more variable the needs, the more sophisticated the needs of the people and therefore the bigger the problem of lack of coincidence of wants. There was a need to come up with a better system so that everyone at least gets what they need and they're able to go home happy. And it is because of that that now people started looking at ways of migrating, shifting from that direct exchange that is called butter trade to a better form that is called indirect exchange. One thing I've noticed about history is that anytime you see an advancement or a development in history, it is trying to take advantage or to improve a problem that existed with the previous system. So the system of butter trade had the weakness of lack of coincidence of ones. And coincidence of ones could have been seen in three different ways. One of the ways is that there was a lack of coincidence in scales. How do you divide a cow so that I am able to get value for the cow if I have come with a bag of rice. It becomes very hard to determine how far do you break down a cow so that you can agree that one kg of rice is equal to this amount of dividing those commodities so that you can say that this was an equal exchange. Also, there was a lack of coincidence in time frames. Someone who has wants to buy a moving a locomotive and I only have fish. What amount of fish do I have to accumulate for me to be able to, to exchange for a car? And by the time I am accumulating the amount of fish that is enough to exchange for a car, the fish will have already gone bad. The time frames did not allow for people to equally or exchange commodities so that they can be able to take care of their needs. Some commodities were more durable than others. It was unfair for someone who keeps fish 
to have to accumulate all that amount of fish for them to exchange for something else that has considered to have a higher value and then the final characteristic that is a lack of a coincidence of once was a coincidence of locations that is space the person who has a cow might be in a different place than the than the person who has cereals and because of that i will not be able to exchange my commodities because of these problems because of the three characteristics lack of coincidence of once in terms of scales in terms of time frame and in terms of space it necessitated for a new system that is how the concept of a medium of exchange was birth. So that is how we came about to the concept of money. Money is basically a medium of exchange that allows people to exchange value and it is a good or a commodity that has been accepted by people to use indirectly to exchange value. Because now that we have agreed we need a medium of exchange, but what is that that we all agree should be money? That was the next conversation. There's a difference between money and the com- a commodity that is used for consumption and a commodity that is used for investment. Money, consumption and investments are three different concepts. Whatever commodity that people were to come up with should not be a commodity that is used for consumption purposes. And also, you cannot use a commodity that is an investment to be defined as money. Why? Because investments and money differ. Money has to be very liquid. But you know, there are some characteristics of investments that make it a bit harder for you to transact using investments. When you have money, you're not expecting any return from money. Money does not give you any return while investments give you return. Investments also have a have a risk of failure one of the characteristics of money is that it shouldn't have any risk it should have minimum level of risk in terms of loss or failure but investments have considerable amounts of risk of failure and also investments are not liquid for you to get to liquidate your investments it takes some time and also there are costs that are attached to that but money should be very liquid and that is what should differentiate between a commodity that is being used as an investment or a commodity that is being used for consumption and a commodity that is being used for exchange purposes and because of that we therefore are arriving at the next level of this discussion where we are saying so for something to be considered as money for us to agree that this should be money what are the characteristics we'll understand has bitcoin met this kind of characteristics has it ticked off the boxes of this kind of characteristics for us to say that bitcoin is a sound form of money and therefore it was important for us to understand this now there is someone who is called Karl Menger considered to be the father of Austrian school of economics and Karl Menger put out one very important characteristic that should be considered when determining money the commodity of money he said that the most important property of money should be something called sellability that money should be something that you should not struggle to sell it and for sure people if you have money you cannot struggle to sell money i don't think there is anyone who has money and wants to transact who will have a problem transacting you transact with money as soon as with fiat currency as soon as you want to do it and that is one of the most important characteristics that Karl Menger the father of Austrian school of economics said that money has to be sellable that when you look at the weakness of the butter trade a commodity that will be able to address those three factors of coincidence of once that will be the best form of money so for something to be an excellent commodity for money purposes it has to address the weaknesses of the butter trade notice how we are slowly transitioning from the butter trade and into the indirect way the medium of exchange the best money should be sellable across space it should be sellable across time and it should be sellable across scales so when you talk about sellability across time that means if you own money that years from now the value of your money should not significantly deteriorate you should not lose value attached to that money over time when you lose value attached to that money over time that is a bad characteristic of that money so anything that works as money but has a very high possibility of you losing value then it is not a good form of money that brings us to the second understanding of the function of money i have already addressed the first function of money which is a medium of exchange the second function of money is that money should be able to store wealth money should be able to store value and as a result whatever you decide to choose as currency should be able to actually store value over time for it to be able to store value that means that money has to be there when that time comes 10 years from now that money has to be there money should have the capability of not rotting it should have the capability of not being destroyed that is the physical aspect of it it's called physical integrity for you to store value it means that you should be able to be available that money should be available 10 years from now i should be able to still have it 10 years from now but the thing is the physical integrity of money is actually not the most important as when it comes to sellability in time because you might have money that's still new 
and in very good condition after a very long period of time but that money has lost value so while it has remained in good condition over a long period of time but the question is has it maintained its value which is the most important aspect of sellability over time so that means that the most important characteristic of money it's its ability not to be produced or increased in amount in order for it to maintain value over a long period of time then the ability to reproduce and make more of it should not be that easy so that you can minimize the amount of production that can happen because remember the more you are able to produce that money the easier it is for it to lose value because of the factors of demand and supply there has to be a way in which you can control the production of money and historically every item that has been used as money has had that characteristic because of that a lot of value has been stored but as soon as people realize that it has become very easy to manufacture or to produce that commodity that is used as money people automatically shift the market has proven over time that it knows when to move to the next commodity if the present commodity being used as money can easily be manufactured that ability to produce new money and the ease and the the difficulty through which you go through to manufacture new money is what is called hardness of money guys so whenever you hear that this is hard money or soft money we are basically talking about how easy is it to produce more of this money and the harder the money the better the softer the money the worse position you are in it is good to hold hard money over soft money any day yeah because the hard money therefore has more capability to protect its value and remember the goal is to store wealth over time the hardness of money therefore can be understood in two ways there is the first side of it which is the stock and then the second side of it which is the flow the stock we are only talking about the money that is actively in circulation right now that is the stock of money and then the flow of money is the amount of money that can be printed to increase the amount of stock how you determine the hardness of that money therefore is by determining something called the ratio of the stock against the flow so if you ever want to know whether the currency that you're holding is hard or soft currency take the amount of money that is available in circulation divide that money by the flow and that ratio will tell you the higher that ratio is the higher that ratio is the stronger the currency the lower that ratio is the weaker the money that is purely how you determine the strength determination of the hardness of money whether something is a good form of money or it is not when you take the stock and you divide by the flow if you get a higher ratio that is good money when you get a lower ratio that is bad money we shall do this kind of experiments in future when we shall be now delving deeper into this series seashells were a form of money at one point but because of technological advancement it became very easy for people to import seashells catching seashells became a very easy process because of technological advancement and as a result the sellability over time in terms of accessibility and reprodu- reproduction of more seashells became easy it became very easy to increase the amount of seashells in the market that made seashells to become easy money and because of that people quickly realize that they need to transition from seashells to now the metal money and the paper money that is purely an example of how the society adjusts when they mean they notice that the money we have currently is soft money now could this be the same thing that is happening in our world today could we already now have figured out ways of increasing the amount of money in circulation and that is why the society is feeling the need now to transition to another form of money is the current fiat currency or fiat money easy to reproduce is it now transitioning into from hard money into is into soft money and it is becoming harder to store wealth over time the hardness of money has never been studied just because you have selected something as money at the moment and you have determined that it is hard it doesn't mean it will be remain hard forever because remember money changes with technological advancement technology makes things easier therefore whatever was harder to produce at a certain point in time because of technology it becomes easier and therefore technology is at the center of determining the transition from one form of money to another and the society has already shown that it's open and okay to transition with technology always look out for technological advancement with how easy it is making the production of more money to become the final function of money is the unit of account when there was no money it was very hard to compare economies it was very hard to do economic calculations it's very hard to determine prices because how are you determining prices for commodities when you don't have a unit of account there has to be one way in which everyone agrees even if you look at the the globe right now 
The reason why we are able to compare countries is because the unit of exchange is widely accepted and there is a, there is a way in which we can come up with numbers that are similar. We can definitely define our economies by the money. That money has necessitated those calculations to happen and to standardize those calculations across the globe. And that has had an impact of improving productivity. It has increased specialization. It has even increased uh, international trade because we now understand which countries have competitive advantage on which specific commodities. And because of that, they now focus more on specialization. If we didn't have money, some of those things would have been very hard to determine. And therefore, the society is at a better position by having a common unit of count. This will play a role in determining whether the world is also ready to embrace Bitcoin as a unit of account so that we can use Bitcoin universally to determine that will the adoption of something like Bitcoin take us back the strides that we have already achieved with the fiat currency. So the unit of account is one other very important function of money and whenever we are now thinking of adopting a new form of money we should be looking at it from that perspective. Is the new form of money able to be used as a unit of account and if that is possible what are the downsides to it? How will it affect present times before we can fully embrace? That is it for me. I have explained to you the characteristics of money. I have explained to you the history of money and the functions of money. Sound money has to be sellable. It has to be sellable over space, over time, and over locations. You should be able to carry money very easily from uh, one place to another. You should be able to protect your wealth over time. And you should be able to break it down into different scales into small amounts and larger amounts. Those are characteristics of money. Anything that cannot achieve that cannot be determined as good money. On the other hand, money functionally is supposed to be able to exchange. It's supposed to enable us to exchange value as a medium of exchange. It's also supposed to store wealth. If you cannot protect your wealth over time, that form of money is not good. And of course, now the third one is unit of account. Universally, we should all be able to agree that we can measure economies, we can measure transactions, calculations using that form of money. With those things, that understanding, then we are now in a very good position for us to proceed to the next level of discussion, where we are now seeing, we are now diving deeper into the history of this money. What was the weakness of this, the, the seashells? And now that we are within the government money, what what is the problem with the government money? Before now, we can say that is why we, we want to start embracing digital currencies. And by the time we are done with that, we shall now introduce you guys to Bitcoin. The journey continues. This is a step-by-step -step journey on trying to understand Bitcoin. You could be one of those people who have never gotten a space where they can fully be able to, to be exposed to this kind of discussion. And this is the right place for you. Our next discussion will now be going into the primitive money. I will just encourage you to support this channel, be part of this conversation, subscribe above all else, and follow me. Preach the gospel of the army of smart people, and I know you cannot come to this channel and go out without any value to yourself. Having said that, thank you very much, and I hope to see you in the next episode where we shall be discussing primitive money. Thank you so much. My name is Duncan, and this is Channel Askdra.